Right, it's 1900 hours. Sh shall we Shall we start, everybody? Yes. Yep. Uh, right, well, before we start, can we have a moment's silence to reflect uh, and to prepare ourselves for the evening discussion, please? Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, welcome uh, uh, everybody, members and watching members of the public to Hyben Didden Parish Council meeting. Um, this is the second time we've held uh, the meeting virtually, so uh, we're all attending this meeting in our own individual circumstances and in our own individual homes. Uh, so please uh, for forgive us uh, uh, for anything that may be different than that. Um, what I'm going to do to start with is uh, uh, I go through the list of councillors to confirm who is present. Okay, so if you're ready, uh, if you say present, uh, Councillor Mark Clark. Present. Councillor Rebecca Clark. Uh, she, I did hear you, she said, yeah, present. Councillor Sean Cullen. Present. Councillor Sandra Delamere. Present. Uh, Councillor Philip Dowd. Present. Councillor Alan Fairhead. Present. Councillor Matthew Chick Kitcher. Present. Councillor Simon Lodge. Present. Councillor David Marchand is not here. Councillor Stephanie Osborne is not here. Councillor Melody Roberts is not here. Councillor Alex Wade. Present. And I, Malcolm Wade, uh, Chairman of the Council, is here as well. Okay, thank you very much. Right, uh, you, you, you know the criteria if you want to speak. Uh, go, say RTS. I am pulling up the chat screen now so I can see if anybody wants to talk to me. Um, apologies. Uh, oh no, first, sorry, apologies. Uh, I need the officers to introduce themselves as well, please. Uh, Tracy Predefleck and Clark. And Claire Donnelly Minute Clark. Thank you very much. My apologies, officers, for not, not introducing you straight away. Okay, apologies from the members. Uh, I think we've got uh, uh, Stephanie Osborne and David Marshland and possibly Melody Roberts. Okay, yeah. now we're moving on to item two, which is declarations of interest and dispensations. To note any declaration of interest made by members in collection of an agenda item, members to specify the nature of interest and to receive any written requests for dispensations. Have we, re has any member got any interest to declare? No. Uh, have we had any written dispensations, officers? No. And therefore I don't need to grant any requests as appropriate. Mr. Chairman, uh, Rebecca's trying to get your attention. Oh yes, sorry, Rebecca. Oh yes, didn't see that. I can't hear you. Uh, Councillor Clark, you are inaudible at this stage. And I just can't lip read, I'm so sorry. Mark, is there any way we can bring Rebecca's sound on? Uh, it is, I mean, it's, um, it's, it must be a, an issue with the iPad, with the audio or her headphones of some <laughs> sort. Um, don't know. Um, I can't, I can't, we can't hear her. This is one of those problems with us all being in different places in a virtual meeting. Oh, ah, can you, yeah. I think we hear you can now. Can you I take my headphones out? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll do it like this then. Um, so it was just to say that um, there, uh, regarding the presentation um, regarding cycling in relation to Fordy Waterside, um, which I'm very interested to, um, to hear, it was just to say that I'm on the New Forest District Planning Committee, so um, I, I, I shan't be um, commenting or, or, or getting involved in, in that segment at all, just listening to the presentation. I just thought it best to, to state that at the beginning. Thank you. 
uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, I'm on the planning committee as well. Um, in regard to that, we haven't had a planning application. Uh, and, and what they're talking about is the proposals to deal with the highway issues. So it's, it, it doesn't necessarily, ref you're not, you, I don't think you need to worry about making a comment because we're not going to be commenting on, on the development itself. We're talking about the road issue and I think you'll probably be okay to comment on that because this isn't about, unless the, our chairman of planning tells us any different or the clerk, I, I think we're not talking about, they're not going to talk about the development itself. It's the implications of development in relation to the road. Uh, okay. So I think you'll be okay to, to talk on that. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, 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 if uh, uh, the, the water ice siting group aren't here yet. Correct. Are they, Mark? No, they're not. They're not waiting. So, shall we move on to the minutes? And, and, if, and if they come, let me know and we'll go back to item three. Uh, now, this is considered a minute of the virtual meeting the council on May 27th, 2020. Uh, we'll do it page by page. Uh, page three. Please sing out if there's anything you want to talk about. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page seven. Page eight. Can I have a, a, a can I have a proposer that they are and a seconder that they are a true record of, of, of the meeting, please? Um, I would like to propose that the minutes are accepted as presented. A seconder for that? I'm happy to second. Is everybody unanimous in agreement? You may raise your hand. Thus, I can see every hand except Matt. Oh, Matt, yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Okay, thank you very much, members. That will do. We now come to chairman's announcements, and I have. Uh, um, have you, I've got a couple. Have you got any more for me, uh, Tracy, that I don't know about? No. no. Okay. Uh, a member of the public uh, asked us, what are these Paris Council's ideas for the community? And I had a chat uh, with, uh, with, 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 with Deputy Clark, uh, and, he, and he's told me I, I should, uh, what I should, answer, I should say, it'd be good to say this announcement to, to everybody. In essence, this council wants Hive and Dibden to be a safe place for people to live, work and visit, where we have a stimulated local economy, good local employment, appropriate affordable housing for our young so they can have their own families and live locally if they wish, enough doctors, surgeries and social cares for those that need it, both young and old, and suitable support services for those that need it too. Of course, properly looked after infrastructure, school roads, etc. We want Hive and Dibden to be happy, positive, climate change aware environment where people want to live, work and play. So what, are, what steps are we as a parish council taking to do that? Well, we are getting, we're getting back our own ACSOs. We've identified uh, uh, candidates for interview, uh, which the previous council stopped. And that's to, to work on people feeling safe again, safe again. We have formed an economic development committee to see what we can do to stimulate the local economy working with other organisations. We are, as councillors, campaigning for affordable housing to be built instead of more retirement homes on our spare building land. We are supporting the building of the new Hive Hospital. Uh, as regards social care, as a county councillor, uh, my colleagues on the parish council and district council, we are campaigning for appropriate funding for social care for our elderly and our young. And, and all, all our councillors are campaigning to help organisations and individuals which provide the support for some that need it, such as the Handy Trust supporting the young. Our parish council outdoor staff do an excellent job on the physical beauty of planting and ground activities. And we set up a climate change committee looking at how this council can be carbon neutral and taking on green initiatives. Because we're in the crisis that we're in now is horrible and, and, and tragic that it is, but the climate change crisis will affect the whole planet and future generations in equally seriousness. So that really, really is, is, is something about, about, about what this council is about. And that sort of answers that question. I have also, uh, from, from Councillor Delamere, uh, to say something uh, about Srebrenica. Saturday, 11th of July is remembering Srebrenica. I hope I pronounced that properly. Memorial Day. 
This year is the 25th anniversary of the genocide in Srebrenica in Bosnia-Herzegovina. I could used to have said that before, where 8,372 Bosnian Muslims, men and boys, were murdered in what the UN described as the worst atrocity on European soil since the Second World War. But the aim of, cha of the charity Remembering Srebrenica UK is wider than mere remembrance, to raise awareness of the genocide in Bosnia and bring people together to tackle hatred and hate build a safer, stronger communities here in the UK. This council emphasises bringing together the communities of Hive and Dibden and building on the community spirit that they've shown during this COVID pandemic. Thank you, Councillor Delamere, for, for that. Okay, uh, I don't think I have any more uh, Chairman's announcements that I can think of, so we will move swiftly on to reports by the County and District Members. Do we have a, a report from Councillor McAvoy, by any chance? Okay. Well, uh, sorry, sorry, it's me again. I, I've got a, a brief one about Hampshire County Council. Uh, I, some of you may have known today they were looking at certain of the financial aspects of the COVID-19 crisis. I want to just say a few things about the people aspect. The council continues to support the community during the COVID-19 crisis and the Hans Helpful Vulnerable Helpline as of 11th of June, we received a total of 13,346 calls and has made a, num a, to made a total number of 5,842 5 local response centre referrals. The districts with the highest number of referrals from the contact centre was the New Forest, 932, which probably reflects the age dynamic of the population. In addition, 848 vulnerable people who are already receiving support through the adult health and care, and 70 individuals have been referred to the, helps, to the adult health and care brokerage team, which sources care, domiciliary, residential and nursing for eligible clients. Help with food and shopping and prescriptions consistently remain the top two reasons for residents seeking support. Secondary schools have remained open in Hampshire since the 18th of March for students who are identified as vulnerable, or the children of the, for the children of key workers. The government has set an expectation that for the 15th of June, secondary schools should open further to offer face-to-face -face support for a quarter of the year 10 students any one time. The Department for Education has made it clear that this is to supplement remote learning and which students will continue to do from home and be their main form of education. Alongside this, secondary schools will continue to support pupils in years seven to nine who remain at home. HCC is welcoming customers back into the libraries in July and will publish further details soon. In the meantime, customers are reminded that the service has continued to offer digital services, including books, magazines, workshops and activities. And finally, members, locally, Hampshire County Council is formulating both its plans for the improvements to the A326 and the Ipley Crossroads. And officers have been asked to come and present to, the, to this council plans for, our com for us to comment on the A326 uh, improvements and that's my county council report. Uh, now I'm going to move to district councillors. Uh, I'll start with councillor Mark Clark. Uh, thank you Mr Chairman. Uh, nothing much to report apart from sitting on the uh, council's task and finish group with regard to council services but I'm sure uh, Alex uh, my colleague would wish to make a make a few comments regarding that but apart from that um, the only other one was the task and finish group related to the uh, leisure centres and um, where uh, we've moved forward on that and that's more up to date with the um, with the task and finish group uh, regarding council services so over to Alex. Okay well the next person on my list is Rebecca. Hello I've taken my earphones out now so hopefully you can hear me can you hear me? Yes brilliantly. Yes. I'm great. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm just on planning mainly at the moment, which has moved to, to weekly, and, and that's the main main thrust of the district work at the moment. So nothing more for me currently. Councillor Philip Dow. Uh, the District Council Waste Strategy Working Group continues to meet via social media. The recent consultation exercise was deemed a success with an impressive online response, as well as the 1,100 surveyed residents. The Cabinet meeting on 3rd of June was also conducted via social media. Under planning and infrastructure, we were informed that the joint initiative with Hampshire County Council, Safe Places to Walk and Cycle, was submitted to the Government on the 5th of June. An increasing number of casework issues stem from frustration 
with poor communication from the district council. I've also tabled a question asking more, um, more about affordable housing for the meeting on the 18th of June. And that, obviously that's happened now, but that, that was um, in the future when I wrote that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sandra Delamere. Uh, nothing much to report, Chairman, other than I attended the um, COVID recovery finances task and finish group, which you also attended. So I'm assuming you've got a rather more lengthy report on that than I have. Thank you, okay. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Alex Way. Thank you, Chairman. Um, obviously, uh, since I last spoke, so much has happened as a, to the district council and as a district councillor. Um, the district council itself has been incredibly helpful in supporting local residents with the community hub based at Appenmore Leisure Centre, supporting just under a thousand households um, who are unable to leave their homes um, with deliveries. And locally our parish has seen some amazing volunteers come together, such as in the Waterside Self-Isolation self Group, which I'm sure that we all agree done an amazing job. Um, I, like many of my fellow councillors, have used some of our council grants from the last financial year and this to contribute to such groups and indeed the Waterside Food Bank in the past few months, among others. And as Councillor Mark Clark um, mentions, we are on the Council Services Advisory Group um, and that met today with lots of uh, information and figures regarding the leisure centres. Um, in fact, there was an update there that slightly contrasts with what I'm about to tell you from the Community and Leisure Overview and Scrutiny Panel, which met earlier this week in the fact that the plan for the leisure centres to be opened based on government feedback, so nothing set in stone, is August, not July. The panel itself was supposed to have met last March, but was cancelled for obvious reasons. Um, and we received an update on the financial position. Um, New Forest District Council has received a grant payment of 410,000 and were able to utilise the government's furlough scheme and for a number of staff, particularly from the leisure, uh, Health and Leisure Centre. The General Fund's budget current position is 435,000 above the original budget. The panel received a presentation about the council's work uh, on a performance management framework and gave feedback on how it should be formatted and laid out. It is linked to the council's corporate plan and the achievement indicators within such a document. However, although there will be a traffic light system used to review how well the council is performing against its targets, I have asked if we will be compared to similar authorities to get an idea if we're performing strongly or not compared to similar districts around the country. In my view, the target set needs to be more ambitious and allow for clearer comparison, as I said, so we can scrutinise effectively on the panel. The cabinet members and the officers asked what we wish to have included, and these, although these targets will not be set by the panels, um, they merely monitored there is limited reference we felt um, to the art. We also received a leisure service update to, and 400 of the staff were placed on furlough, as I've previously mentioned. The leisure centre review and proposed change in management of the service has been delayed, although I believe the task and finish group will be meeting later this year to discuss further. Um, Obviously, I have concerns about the process as so much has changed and the impact on the leisure service. Um, if possible, I would like to see it delayed, but obviously that is a decision um, for the wider council. The leisure centres are planning for phased reopening um, with ideally a couple of leisure centres opening first, of which have or may be one of them. And any opening timelines will be reviewed by the council services task and finish group alongside um, the three other ones that were set up in the impact of COVID-19. Officers are in regular communication with the government advising on the impact on leisure centres, although it's worth noting that their revenue impact has been nearly a million a month uh, since this has happened. They're also working on how best to provide um, social distancing services for all staff, such as one-way systems uh, and not having showers available, for example, when they first open. The council are also in discussion, by the way, with the local police force to have a remote CCTV station at a local police station to be confirmed. This will be to reduce the impact on officers in dealing with an incident, having to travel to look at the information based at Apple Meet Free Court. This is a very positive idea and the council are looking to get funding from the Police Crime and Commissioner, so it's cost neutral as well. They also are looking to review the community engagement plans. Um, but unfortunately, they're not as likely to meet as many people as they had hoped and beat the, uh, the amount of 600 people who were spoken to last year. 
but they are looking to communicate with groups that were underrepresented last year, such as the younger members of the district, which um, for anyone who actually looked at the data would agree that so few people from that age range was actually spoken about, about how they felt um, about health, community safety in our area. There's been no recent update from the Police Crime Commissioner. However, there is a Safer Together event that's currently ongoing, but it's called Safer Together Apart and is virtual. Um, the panel also received a presentation from the Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, it's been confirmed that there will be a grant of £185,000 in the third year, which is down 30% um, over a three-year period. And some councillors did highlight that they'd be willing to discuss further funding for the service, particularly in the current climate where it is invaluable what they offer. Lastly, uh, they're actually going to be revamping their website and we were shown the first look at a very positive work in progress. Anyone who's ever looked at planning on NFD site will be very encouraged to know it's far less wordy, more simpler to read. And from what I've seen so far, it's very encouraging uh, and it will work on tablets and phones as well. Uh, and lastly, I did ask a question about any community acknowledgement of all the volunteers around the district and it is being considered by the cabinet member. Sorry, it was a lengthy report. We had a meeting this week. My apologies. No, apologies. Thank you. Very good. Uh, how do you follow that? Well, uh, I have a, just a, not quite as long as that. Uh, the district council has been very active in the virtual meeting field and the planning committee, uh, as Councillor Clark said, meets regularly. But the most important that lo local application didn't go to committee and it was decided by officers, and that was the decision to reject McCarthy and Stone's second application for the police station site, which this council and most local people are against, as we'd like to see starter homes for young people built on that site. I attended the Environmental Overview and Scrutiny Committee with Councillor Osborne on the 11th of June. It was a packed agenda, but I asked the portfolio holder responsible for car parks if we removed the charges in the village and town centre car parks to help local traders for a couple of months to help them get back on their feet and encourage people to shop locally. Without understanding the impact of helping traders compared to the impact of not doing so, he refused a very short-sighted approach. The other signal item was a report on Waterside Rail, which told us the bid to get funding to do the feasibility study on bringing it back had been secured. I attended the waste strategy meeting last week with, uh, along with Philip, and that project is moving us onward despite the crisis and more information on what the future holds will be available at the end of the summer. Finally, the COVID-19 recovery progress meeting started this week with the following. With the following finding some resources, and I attended that with uh, Councillor Delamere and Councillor Dowd. The meeting laid out the current situation with a projected shortfall of six to nine million in funding and contained a report on the areas where savings can be made and services reduced. Clearly, the rec rec recreation centres are a key issue with the high staffing and operating costs. The administration doesn't want to open if the loss of the furlough money is not equal by the income. The point I made is that with the lockdown, increasing mental health issues and other health problems, getting the centres back up and running is a public health issue, not just a financial one. The authorities should look to other areas to address this financial balance instead of dropping the non-statutory activities such as recreation centres. I even advised them to do an asset review of land and buildings in owned in case liquefying an asset could save jobs and services. I see my role on the group along with my Lib Dem colleagues is to fight to save local services for local people and get the authority to look at other options to solve its financial crisis. That is my report. I would like to welcome Councillor Melody Roberts who's joined us and John Lawrence from the uh, uh, Waterside Cycling Organisation. Welcome, welcome, John. Are you going to give us a presentation? I'm trying to unmute him at the moment. Right. John. That. Oh, is there that, he is. Yes, I spoke to Philip earlier on this evening and he was all ready to come and connect. So although I had difficulty connecting because it's the first time I ever have, I eventually got there. And I was expecting him to already be with you. You know, right. I spoke to, I spoke oh, to right. him at seven o'clock. So what I'm wondering is if he hasn't logged on for some reason, um, you carry on with other business and hope that somehow, uh, like me, he eventually gets on. Okay, well, we can carry on. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to bring you guys in any time that you, you arrive. We'll just Good put night. it on the next. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Right, Chairman, can I, 
can, sorry, can I make a proposal that if I just go offline for a second, I'll give him a ring and try and get him in online? Yeah, no problem. Uh, well, yes, the public forum's in a minute, but the, the le member of the public isn't here yet. So is, isn't uh, joining us, so I'll do that. But the next item is reports from members serving in outside bodies. I suppose, I suppose anybody's been on an outside body, have they? <laughs> no, okay, so we go to the public forum. Members of the public were invited to make representations of Ivan Dillon Parish Council on any matters regarding the work of the council. We, we've had one question, uh, and, and please forgive me, members, because I've got to read it from my phone. I have got an answer for it, uh, of sorts, right. Excuse me. Here we go. Right now, um, this 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 is from uh, a, a, a Mrs. Jenny Jeffries, and she would like to know if there are any hot spots in the area, and think every parish council should be active in collating this. For example, if Limington is a hot spot, I can live without a visit to Marks and Spencers. She quotes. As an ex-social worker and I've completed research for this, she'd be happy to collate the information in various sources. Can the question be asked, is this information be collated? If not, can we start collecting it? She, she was also keen to know how many people are being tested and to what degree, what percentage are these tests positive uh, in the local area? Well, I uh, went to the uh, uh, county council uh, question for members uh, of the kind of areas, and I have, this is what, if you're right, forgive me getting the right bit of paper, this is what they told me. He says, uh, will be a slight pause. Uh, this, it may be virtual for you, but me, it's all bits, bits of paper. Right, okay. Um, the answer regarding this that was this. There is some publicity of publicity available data, publicly available data for each of the points mentioned, and they have outlined what is, is and isn't available, and when it's available, where it can be found. The number of COVID-19 deaths in Hive and Dibden. The Office for National Statistics has published on the 12th of June an interactive map on the number of deaths occurring in the period March to May 2020 by Middle Layer Super Output Area MSOA, where COVID-19 was mentioned as a cause of death on the death certificate. You need to enter either Hive or Dibden postcode to see the written relevant number of deaths. Two, the number of tests overall in Hive and Dibden and the negative or positive breakdown, the number of tests is not available at ward or neighbourhood level. The number of positive tests is available at lower tier authority, LTLA, and can be found uh, on a link. And we will, I'll send the link to, to, to Mrs. Jeffries. Are there any COVID-19 hotspots in Hive and Dibden in the New Forest District? We don't know how many people are infected in the broader population, as many will not present to the healthcare system for a number of reasons. If they don't have symptoms or they have tolerable symptoms and can self-treat after examples. Whilst we do know of a confirmed case, it's not always clear where the infection was acquired. Certain settings such as care homes, hospitals and schools are a few examples which are required to notify Public Health England if anyone if anyone in that setting has a test and is confirmed positive. As a result of the setting, can be supported to reduce the likelihood of onward transmission and hopefully out avoid an outbreak situation. Hampshire County Council are writing their local outbreak control plan support settings to manage outbreaks effectively. Well, I did go on to these websites uh, and um, probably the, 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 the um, sort of IT dinosaur that I am, I couldn't quite get the answers I was looking for. I think I, there have been 286 cases in the New Forest, uh, which I managed to, to find that out, actually. So what I'll do, uh, I, I will forward this email to, to Mrs. Jeffries with the links on so she can have a look for herself. Uh, is there any, any comments, Tracy, that you want to add to that? No. Okay. Well, that was the public uh, forum. Um, Mark's on the phone to hopefully Mr. Thomas. So we'll go to the planning committee to receive the delegate decisions planning committee. Over to you, Alex. Um, for yes, sir, are we allowed to have any questions to county and district councils? Um, uh, Ask you, that's not, well, yes, you can, well, it's not on the agenda. <laughs> that bit's not on the agenda. You, you can, but it's not on the, on the agenda. Can I, can I request it? Um... Let, me, let me just ask Tracy how we can do this. We normally have a, a, an, an item on the agenda where we can question the councillors or members on outside bodies. 
you're, you're muted. Because you're in public session, you can still bring it up in public session. You bring it up in public session. We'll, we'll do that before planning committee. Yeah. You're muted now, Alex. In that case, I'd like to bring it up um, in public session. Um, the, um, I would like to say that the, mainly a statement really, um, is that um, my understanding is from the group that I met with today about COVID services, is that the encouraged by councillors such as myself and the majority of the group, um, the preference is to keep the leisure centres open um, versus any other option. So I appreciate that there are lots of committees talking about different things and I echo exactly the reasons, in fact I pretty much said very similar to what you said councillor Malcolm Wade, um, as is some of my colleagues, but um, I, in the group that I went with today um, we were asked for our feedback and the, and the majority was actually working towards where safe and possible to get them open uh, as the preferred thing for our communities for their physical and mental health, as you said. Um, and it's because it's the right thing um, to do. And um, so I just wanted to echo that point because it's slightly countered with uh, your experience in your group. Brilliant. Good. That's excellent. Thank you, Alex. Well, before we go to the plan, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, Philip Thomas uh, and John Lawrence of the Waterside uh, Cycling, cycling action group who's going to give us a presentation uh, over to you mr thomas and welcome can you hear me yes we can right because i've just got rid of it now i've got to share screen post disabled participant share screen sharing um click on that do it again I'm not, I'm, so I've been shown how to do this, but I'm not getting my, um, the thing up. So it's I, telling, this, is, this is new to all of us, take your right. time. I should be able to click on share screen, on share. Host disabled participant screen sharing. I can't get the thing up. Mark, um, Councillor Clark showed me how to do it the other day, but it's just not happening. Uh, yeah, just bear with me a moment, John, and we're just trying to trying to get you up. Uh, Councillor, if you talk to Mr. Chairman, you can just talk amongst yourselves for a moment while we sort this out, um, and then we'll do it. Shall we do the planning committee minutes while we're doing that? Alex, would you like to present the planning committee minutes, please? Yes, I would like to present... Um, the planning committee minutes from June's planning meeting um, as with the case of the previous few months it was done by all looking through the applications and sending comments to me the chair where the final information comments and decision was sent by myself oh, uh, Mr. Clark. by the agreed deadline to uh, Claire to send to NFDC for comment um, if you could all look at pages 9 to 12 in your agendas we'll go through them page by page um, and if you have any comments or challenges, please just uh, let me know, okay? So I'm gonna go page by page, at page nine. Page 10. I'd like to point out that on page 10, this council uh, chose to object to the Forley Waterside um, application um, based on uh, information that we've received and concerns over the impact on our community, such as traffic, um, lack of infrastructure to support it on the roads and public transport. Uh, it was not a comment on the additional housing, which we did know to supporting, but we felt a full objection uh, gave our views. Um, and it is, we believe similar uh, authorities have done so too. Page 11. And lastly, page 12. Do we all agree this was a fair account of the, the minutes and information that we all agreed? And are you happy for, uh, for me to propose these? Fantastic, so proposed. And again, thank you to the officers and indeed my fellow councillors for getting the information in on time and so um, efficiently. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Well done, everybody. Right, are we ready to go, Mark? I believe so, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thomas, can you do that? No. Uh. I think we've just got it on the wrong, on the wrong presentation. Mr. Thomas, if you come out of screen sharing. Yeah. 
if you stop at the top, you, you come get the, you get the screen sharing, you come out of screen sharing and then just choose the right screen. John Lawrence here. Oh, ah, there we are. Got it. Yeah, that's it. We've got 15 minutes to present, then we want to have a chat and ask questions about, about your presentation. Thank you. The floor is yours. Mr. Thomas, you've got your microphone muted. Sorry, right. That, that's it, you're on. Okay. Now I'll go through very quickly these series of photographs when the thing comes up. Right, now what I've been doing back in January, I took a series of photographs of the various junctions between the manor roundabout and all the way down to the Ken Hills corner. But I'm only going to show you the photographs and discuss these now from the manor roundabout down to the Hardley roundabout. And I'll run through. Now the first one is at the junction at the bottom of Man, uh, Main Road. You probably recognize this. To the left, we're going down to the golf club. And in a second, and what we're looking at is the traffic coming from that junction. That's 40 miles an hour. And we've got to cross this road um, with that 40 mile an hour traffic. The next photograph is looking to our right, which is the, the man, uh, Dibden roundabout. The Hampshire County Council proposed to put a crossing point about where the front of that, that grey van is. I'll show you in a second the, the, the style, but you're looking at the crossing point, as I say, where that green van is. Now the traffic's going to be coming around there in so far that we have a 40 mile an hour, sorry, a left hand dedicated lane coming straight off that roundabout. That's the plan. The style to the right hand side of that sign is a footpath which links to the A326 verge. And the idea of the Hampshire is to have the cycling down the verge, along the verge, close to the A326. The problem with that is um, bow waves coming off, rail, off lorries and also anyone cycling north in the dark will be blinded by lights. As you know, cars dip to the left in this country and those dipped lights will be going straight into cyclists eyes, anyone cycling north. Anyone cycling south We'll also have that traffic very close to the right-hand shoulder, which isn't a good idea. And we're trying to get Trots Lane and a, tr a path past the Southampton's uh, training ground. But we'll talk about that again. Now I'm on the south side of this of the main road. I've come up the cycle path, which is linking us to the existing cycle path down to Applemore. And you can see the, vis the visibility to our right hand side. Again, that's a 40 mile, 40 mile an hour road. And at the moment, there's no refuge in the center of the road. I'm looking to my right, my left, the junction, uh, the roundabout, sorry. Again, that roundabout is going to have a dedicated left hand lane. The traffic comes off that roundabout at speed now. And what we're worried about is that it'll be very difficult for a cyclist, stroke pedestrian, to cross that road safely. That is a photograph I took on the 25th of the 1st. You can see the date at the bottom, right, right hand side. That is the result of a crash up there. So obviously people are driving into one another on the verge. Uh, sorry, and leaving debris on the verge. I've come now down to Applemore roundabout. I'm on the junction, uh, sorry, I'm at the giveaway line. All the photographs are taken from the giveaway lines. And you can see the visibility of uh, us, us seeing the A326 to our right. Again, there's going to be a dedicated 
left hand lane coming off that roundabout, uh, off that roundabout coming down through size away. I'm in, I'm on the refuge now, in the middle of size away. I've just come away from the, well, you can see the bollard, which is the site sign, light, uh, give, give way sign for the cyclists coming down the hill on the cycle path. Again, you can see the lack of visibility, especially if a left-hand uh, lane is to be pushed through there. Now, what I've suggested is that size away, that cycle path that is, you can see there, is extended as a, as a joint use uh, path all the way to the, the mini roundabout at the entrance of Tesco. That would make it a great deal easier and safer because the traffic's whipping off that roundabout now and up to the mini roundabout at Tesco, sometimes in excess of 40 miles an hour. It's a 60 mile an hour road and they're not hanging about. I always know cycle illegally on that footway. I'm south of the junction now. I've come off the, the um, refuge in the center. And again, you're seeing the left-hand lane problem. The, ref, the refuge in the center of the A326, HCC, Hampshire County wants to narrow that. And that is gonna cause problems with people riding tandems, recumbents, anyone with a child on a trailer bike, uh, anything like that. And also no possibility, the fact you've got hand-cranked bikes in the area. I've seen one or two of hand-cranked bikes. Disabled people who can't use their legs and use their hands to crank, the, uh, as uh, to pedal essentially. Sorry, that's just a repeat. Repeating what I'm say, just said that. I've sent all the comments that are on with these uh, photographs to yourselves. They've been sent, uh, they've been distributed to yourselves today by Claire Donnelly. I tried to make a handout, including the photographs, tried to send that as an email, but it was three times the size of my email box, so I couldn't send it. Right, we're down now to the Heath roundabout. The, do the drop curb, you can see, is the cycle path from uh, the Roman road onto the Heath roundabout. That's only about eight foot wide. That, in my mind, is too narrow for cyclists to use. That should be wider. And now down on the giveaway sign are the cycle crossing on the Heath roundabout. And again, you can see the volume of traffic coming through. You can see the speed of that traffic and occasionally you won't see anybody bothering to indicate. Very few cars in this area know indicate. I've gone to the central reservation, photograph going south. You can see the, ver the various cars going in all directions. Um, again, we're worrying about cyclists going across the Heath roundabout, going into the new forest. Same place, you can see two cars trying to come up from Roman, um, yes, Roman Road, and one car in front of me coming up from Buell, uh, yep, uh, Dibden Pearl, yeah, sorry, and, a, and three cars, four cars, all going in whatever direction they're going, probably down the A326, possibly going into the forest. Photograph to the south showing Roman Road with the Crossing in front of me, car in front of me. Um, again, I'm on the refuge and I'm working my way south. If you look to the entrance of the, of the um, car park to the Heath Hotel, or the Heath, whatever it is, you'll see that there's very little visibility to the left. I've, uh, I've got a photograph there showing that lack of visibility. I should have moved that slide. That's what a driver can see of a cyclist coming up from um, Stibden Purlieu. Right, now I've got to go back a couple and I'm in a mess of that. So what I'll do is that, and I'll go to slideshow from current slide. Let me go back a couple. Sorry, I should have moved that. I did move a couple. Right there, and from current slide, we're in business. 
I'm on the southern side, I'm outside the Heath Hotel and you can see the traffic now coming down the Heath, uh, onto the Heath Roundabout, the size of the Heath Roundabout, the various junctions that cyclists have to negotiate to go round into the New Forest. This is a photograph from the south side of the Heath Roundabout, looking north, this, uh, the Heath uh, Hotel is behind me and you can see the visibility at the moment down towards Dibden Purlio. Now this photograph was taken towards the end of January. I don't know what the visibility is like there because I haven't been down there to see, to tell you the truth. I'm finding the cycle paths around here are too narrow for me to cycle if pedestrians are walking on them. And I've got problems. I need, I'm one, would be one of the shielded cycle uh, people because of my health problems. If I caught the germ, uh, the virus, I, the chances of survival are very low with me because I've got an existing heart problem, unfortunately. So I don't know what that vegetation is like, but you can see that there isn't much in the way of visibility. I've got to go out to the road to see that car. Have you seen that photograph? I'm now down at Butts Hash, turning right into a lay-by, which is going to take me to Folly Road. This is the pre present cycle route south, and what we would like to do is push the cycle route parallel with the A326, but in the fields from the, uh, the uh, wildlife centres, I'll call it, at Forest Front, straight past the soccer ground there and down to the Hardy Roundabout. Otherwise, we've got a large diversion. I've got to turn right at this juncture, at this junction. There's cars coming from Folly Road, from the veterinary, the vet's um, surgery, and there's more cars usually parked in this uh, spot of road. This is looking the other way. Normally there's a great line of cars parked in front of that grey car, and there's no, sometimes there's a van type parked tight up against the junction, which goes to Heatherstone, I think it is, um, cutting down visibility completely for someone coming out of that road, possibly catching a cyclist. I've been driving down to John, who lives uh, in Ashley Close, just beyond the junction, the El Yelverton Junction, and it's great to have difficulty seeing anything to the right-hand side when uh, that, that area is badly fully parked up. This is the connection now to um, Folly Road. The vet's roof is opposite. Uh, you can see a green horse box or something, whatever it is, in their grounds. You can see the mud there. You can see the bollards. I've had an argument with a gentleman who's painting the gable end of the house to the right. I could, I could just get through between the two bollards. That's the one in the grass, that's the one in the center of the, of the tarmac. He reckoned if I couldn't get through there, I shouldn't be cycling. My argument was there was a car parked in the mud. And my argument was anyone with a trailer bike, the incumbent, as I mentioned already, wouldn't get through there. Looking back at that, junc at that uh, junction, um, showing the bollards, showing the state of that uh, lay-by. There's a 90 degree bend there uh, to the front of this house. I haven't photographed that, but there's a 90 degree bend there. Barriers at uh, looking Fleurette Close. Again, any long bike, any, anything with any problems, um, incumbent, whatever, is forced into the road. That road now is coming very busy. As you know, there's a housing estate to the left of it. There's also ahead the uh, gravel uh, extraction uh, plant. That road is busy and some cars don't obey the 40 mile an hour speed limit. I've seen some people charging up there, somewhat more than 40, and you're forcing cyclists into the road by pushing them around this track, uh, this path, and it would be good for usage from, uh, from highs. But that barrier there is very awkward to negotiate. Uh, I know you've got to protect for it close, the cars there. 
but the barrier should be a slightly different design, maybe not such a big overhang, uh, where the two ends of the barriers meet, and maybe even a little wider, uh, uh, yeah, wider itself to so a larger bike could get through. There's no turning circle there. And down at the Hardy Roundabout, I'm at the giveaway sign, I'm looking north, the road, I don't know what happened there, it wasn't me. Uh, the road uh, from Fall, which I've just cycled down, very little visibility because of those bushes. And anybody could be coming around there at some speed. Next one, nearly at the end. Again, I'm in the central reservation looking north. Many lorries come across this lane going down to uh, Fawley, the uh, the petrol tankers, I'll call them. Visibility from Foley Road is limited and very few cars indicate. So it's a case of dashing across there, trying to find out where people are, you know, what they're doing. Right, now this road is Cudland Road where the petrol tankers going down. Uh, the reason for this photograph is the lack of visibility coming through uh, from the refinery. Can't see anything there in the way of a car to the last possible moment. I'm on the south side of that junction, facing Duncadlin Road towards the refinery, and uh, can't see a dicky bird. And again, this is 21st of March, uh, this is in January, don't know what it's like now, but obviously during the lockdown, the local authority possibly didn't send anybody out to do any hedge trimming. That might have become very, very difficult to see, to see over, to see any cars. Approaching that last photograph from the Forest Home pub, no visibility of cars at all across the two hedges. I'm not saying we cut hedges down, but they should be trimmed to a low visibility. Uh, HGVs, petrol tankers, anything with a tall cab or back to the photograph, uh, back, you know, trailer is visible. A car isn't visible. Last but one photograph. Uh, you've got the sign there for the forest home. We're looking to, and you've got uh, Travis Perkins opposite. You can see the green, uh, green and yellow signing, and you can see the traffic going down um, Long Lane. Now, I have a series of photographs showing the service road and any all the problems on Long Lane. But A, time. B, it's pa the parish council in Forley should be dealing with that. And, uh, and I can talk about why I've not been down to Forley, to tell you the truth. Uh, and we need them involved, but I must admit that Councillor Alvi was more or less sent an email to me saying that he was quite happy with what was happening on the service road, but I could spend a great deal of time with problems on the service road. The last photograph, John took this photo, no, John obtained this photograph off the computer you can see the date, 4th of June 2020, at the end of the lockdown, and a car's come up through the Heath roundabout at some speed and ended up in the ditch. There was another photograph as well. Um, we've sent that to Councillor Humby, just letting him know what's going on. I've finished there, but may I bring, I'm not going to go through this now, but may I bring my your, what's the word I'm looking for? Attention to the summaries that I placed at the end of this uh, pr presentation. I've sent this to you and Claire Donnelly has told me this morning, today that this has been circulated. And if you were to look through this, you'll see various comments that I've made with respect to the various roundabouts. Uh, if I just talk about this long bottom one here and then I'll stop. Development of a cycle path between Hythe Marina and Veals Lane would be a great benefit to cyclists traveling between Hythe and Marchwood, who now have either to cycle along the main road, along main road should be a capital M there, past the golf club, 
or make their way up to the Applemore roundabout, which you've just looked at. I'll finish there. If I may, I will click on end show and Bob's your uncle, and then I can take that clean out of touch. Mr. Thomas, thank you very much for that presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, right. I'm sure some members might want to ask you some questions if you're okay with that. Yes, uh, certainly. And then we can just understand what you would like this council to do. Uh, the first question I've got is from Councillor Philip Dowd. Uh, good evening, Mr. Thomas. Um, thank, evening, you Mr. Very, thank you very much for your really um, detailed um, um, disposition on all of that. I, it was it was it was hugely um, um, informative. Um, it was a shame that uh, um, you weren't able to be with us um, when when we had the um, workshop with South Trans. I gather you've been in touch with South Trans. We haven't. We know I'm a member of Sustrans, whether as a not as a volunteer, but as a, a member. And I know that they do look at uh, developments and put in their uh, thoughts on the developments. So right. we could get in touch with them. Yes, because in, in the in the workshop, um, I work very closely with some um, councillors from Marchwood, and a lot of what you were saying we actually raised at that workshop because we were concerned that there was good connectivity on um on those on on, on those um less um busy uh, roads um but bet between marchwood um so i i would be quite disappointed if none of that has actually come through i haven't seen um, i i mentioned in my in my um district councillors um report the fact that the safe places to walk and cycle had been submitted but I've not actually seen a copy of what was submitted so far so I'd be interested to know whether a lot of what you've said has actually done um, gone, gone through as part of that. Um, I think uh, the other concerns um, you, you raised about you know we, where we've got a signpost saying cycle route and yet, you, and yet you've got bollards and you've got barriers and things. It, it just doesn't make sense, does it? There's no, there's no joined up thinking on those. So I think you've made some really, really important points there. So thank you for your presentation. Right. If I may jump in there, I know Sunstrands are removing bollards off their cycle and um, cycle routes, which were placed initially. And there's been complaints as we are talking now and they are in the process of removing bollards on paths that they have created. Right. So is it, Could I is, yeah. Sorry, Could I it, uh, yeah, John, yeah, Mr. Lawrence, please do. Yes, uh, I, I'm the sort of technical advisor to the group, and we were not aware of that meeting uh, towards the end of last year. We formed shortly after that, but uh, one of the comments we have said uh, in our objections to the whole of the proposals related to Forley Waterside is that we, uh, with Long Lane, there's a great reluctance of the County Council to investigate the option of providing a route on the refinery side. And we've actually made a comment that because Hampshire seemed to be very pushed for having sufficient staff to do detailed designs, we'd be very happy to in fact see Sustrans employed to do an evaluation of the route running from Church Lane Forley through to Hartley Roundabout. And that is something we'd like to see happen because we think they'd approach it with a more open mind and perhaps Hampshire, who are not prepared to consider it for quite some time until you, you members and others put pressure upon them to say, look, Exxon have made this offer. It should be explored further. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I did. But I was told about that, uh, that they, they, they hadn't considered it. I did have, make a number of representations to them. And they now assure me that they are going to work with Exxon on, on the solution. Uh, members, are there any more questions or things you want to talk to, to, to Mr. Thomas or Mr. Lawrence about? Because I have one, but I want you to go first. Any more RTSs? No? Okay. Right. Gentlemen, what I would like to ask you is, what would you like 
this parish council to do? Because we, we, we've listened to your presentation and, I, and, I, and you've made some really important points. Uh, and I totally on board with the, these left hand filter lanes. How are you going to get across? The A326 for years has been the, the longest cul de sac in Hampshire with increased amount of traffic. And, and when they build the um, 1500 homes down the road, uh, that will put another substantial number of vehicles on, on, on it. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you've made some very good points. Before you answer, can, uh, Alex Way wants to say something. Over to you, Alex. Uh, it was just merely to ask John and Philip, um, in areas particularly like Roman Road, um, which are challenging at the best of times for drivers, pedestrians, for cyclists, quite narrow roads and with a lot of quite dangerous uh, touch points. Um, what did you want to see from a cyclist perspective, particularly in areas like Roman Road? So there's a, a sort of a safe journey for cyclists uh, moving along that way, because particularly from the Heath down as you go towards um, Hardly Roundabout, it's, it's quite a concerning road. Um, I imagine for cyclists and pedestrians, uh, what would you like to see as your dream outcome? I'll, I'll take one on. Um, <clears throat> we actually walked along the footway last night and although it's much appreciated, it still isn't pleasant for you to walk single file on that footway because of the speeds of some of the vehicles. And there seems to be generally a wider application of trying to encourage lower speed limits to be put in. And it would feel less intimidating if that was 20. But we know a number of drivers will exceed 40. And unfortunately, I believe it's a police policy not to enforce 20 mile per hour limit zones, but to rely upon other traffic calming measures, which sometimes cause additional obstructions to cyclists. So it's a difficult one to deal with. Uh, hopefully, there may be a change of attitude slowly brought about by the government's priorities trying to reshape um, future transport and recognising the role of walking and cycling but generally the motorists may become more subservient than they are at the present time when they seem to be totally dominant. I agree with John there. I've cycled a great deal on the, for on the continent and cyclists are seen as very important people. Cars and lorries go past cyclists. We have pr priorities on junctions if we've got a cycle uh, facility. We've had pr pr priorities on roundabouts. My brother and I have been cycling and HGVs have stopped to let us cross an arm of a roundabout to carry on in a straight line. Now we've come up on the, on the, uh, on the, the right, we ride on the right hand side over there obviously. We've come up to the roundabout, we want to go straight on Going off to at three o'clock, HGV stops, lets us go across, and we just carry on. It is really um, education, and as John says, we need a, um, a paradigm fit, a shift to enable cyclists to, to appear to be more important than cars. And unfortunately, that's not going to that's not going to happen for a very long time. So, as John says, I think twenty mile an hour on those roads would be very useful. Okay. What, what would you like from this council, gentlemen? Because you've given us a good presentation. Uh, you've made some very, very valid points. Uh, and you're dead right about cycling on the, on, in Europe is taken very, very differently than the way we do in this country. Uh, and it, it's the policy of all councils to focus on non-car transport, be it rail, cycling, ferries or otherwise. But what would you... Looking at this situation, what would you like from us? I, I want to ask that question. If, if, if you could be so bold as to give a response. Yes, I'd ha be happy to. Um, I think that we've already been very appreciative of the support individual councillors and uh, the council as a whole, given the fact that you've already objected to the development along the lines of our concerns. And I don't think that we can ask for much more support at this present time other than as individual members if you're on the relevant committees to express the views uh, that we have included in our formal objections i'm afraid you've been snowed under with lots of versions but that is partially as a result of the lack of response from hampshire county council 
which we highlighted in the latest letter we sent to Councillor Humby. We sent a 13 page dossier about the problems in detail over three months ago. And as you probably saw from his reply, which he copied to you, he was inviting us to let them have details of the location and nature of these problems. They had that three months ago. And what is very interesting, things seem to be happening very quickly at the moment. And today we received a letter from the New Forest Access Forum, who we had submitted the same document, the 13 page document to. And this letter is unbelievably supportive from the chair of the New Forest Access Forum, agreeing with virtually all that we have said in that representation. And they're saying that please be assured that they will respond to any formal consultation report for the proposed development. Now we're going to check to see whether in fact they did make a formal submission over the Forty Waterside um, development. And if they didn't, we're going to ask that uh, even though we know technically the closing date passed yesterday, for this type of letter to be sent to the planners so they can assess it. And we've also had an invitation to talk to the New Forest, um, oh, not district, uh, oh, mental block, the, the New Forest National Park Authority. They said they'd like to meet us and discuss some of our concerns. So we don't seem to be challenged on what we're saying by very many. We're generally getting a fair degree of support, perhaps not from motorists who want to get from A to B as quickly as possible. But I think we just got to plug away and I'm hoping uh, we seem to have had the door reopened for discussions further with the county council officers who, although we did have a meeting in February, it was very much, uh, we've been granted the privilege of an hour to talk to them. We left the uh, documents with them shortly afterwards, and it looks as if they haven't looked at them, because in the objection, the last objection, revised objection, we submitted to uh, the National Park and the District Council yesterday, we made the point that it didn't seem as if they had paid any attention to the points we were making. And that is quite a strong element of disappointment. But hopefully we've tried to respond to Councillor Humby in a positive way, suggesting that we do open the dialogue, but only after they've at least responded to us once in writing, having looked at the detailed points we've been making. Thank you. Thank you. Can right, I come before in I make a concluding remark. Sorry, Mr. Thomas, Can I come in as something? well, please? Can I come Thank in you. as well, please? Um, Cut Mark. Pardon? So I'll say it's Councillor Clark's next, but I go on then. Sorry. Um, I'd like to follow up with John's comments. When we saw the uh, Hampshire County Council design team, I, I gave them a memory stick, which they downloaded onto their computers of the de um, presentation you've seen, the complete presentation, as I say, all the way down to Kenneth Lane. And I've also given you the memory stick which I pushed through the letterbox of the Grove House at the beginning of the lockdown. And um, I know uh, Councillor Clark says that he's seen one or two of the photographs, or I believe he has. So that, those photographs are within your, on your server, if you have a server or whatever you have, so that you could look at those again with comments uh, written, written above the, the various photographs. But the County Council have had those photographs. Okay, thank Sorry. you. Councillor yeah. Clark. Uh, no, just uh, ask you, Mr Chairman, as the County Councillor, whether you could chase that up with uh, Mr uh, Humby uh, to make sure he's got it and has read it and understands exactly uh, the concerns. What, 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 what uh, Councillor Humby, uh, bless him, will deal with the strategic level uh, activities uh, and, and it's down to the, 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 the infrastructure below him to deal with the detail. What I was going to say as a concluding remark, what we can do, I want to get the county council to come to this council, give a presentation on what they intend to do about the A326. And I think the presentation you've made and some of the excellent points about 
safety uh, has resonated with, with, with the council and if the members agree with my approach then we can we can have a, a discussion with the county council on, on, on the points that you've raised uh, the more that we try to influence uh, and uh, the, if you part, yeah, the more we try to influence the county council, the better uh, the argument will be. Uh, we want, as I think I said earlier in the meeting, we want this to be a, heart, a safe place for people to live, work, and play. And we want whoever those cycle to feel they can go, don't have to use a car, can cycle safely across the waterside and through our, our community and members pay members are very many residents in this cyclists and we want to make sure that they get a, a, a safe and appropriate uh, uh, cycle routes so yeah we're for, we are supportive of that are, are you uh, is everybody happy that that's what we're going to do show of hands please Right, excellent. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think you're going to be muted now because we're going to move on, but you're welcome to, to watch uh, 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 the live version when it comes up. Once again, thank you, gentlemen, for a great presentation. Right, members, uh, we're now going to item 10, which is representatives on outside bodies. Um, this is because when we appointed Councillor Osborne to the uh, Dibden Allotments Fund, for four years as it should have been, it appeared that uh, Councillor Roberts and Councillor Cullen were only appointed for two by the previous clerk. I don't know if you're aware of that, which is not the way it's done. Uh, and uh, uh, what we're going to do is ask, consider that we uh, increase that, um, what's the word, representation from two to four years. Tracy, do you want to add anything to that? No, that, that's fine. You know, if Council make a resolution now, that'd be fine. First of all, uh, Councillor Cullen and Councillor Roberts, are you okay to do four years on that organisation? It would be a pleasure. Councillor Roberts? If I'm able. Well, you're very able, can I say. <laughs> right, members, uh, can I have a show of hands? Uh, I, well, I have a proper propose. I will propose from the chair that we... we, we uh, make those representations from two years to four. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Okay. Can, I, can I have a show of, ha show of hands? Are we all in favour? That's unanimous. Yeah, I'm including you, Sean. I'm sure you're showing your hand, really. Right, okay, that is, that is, that is unanimous. Okay, we're now going to move on to uh, item 11, which is to receive a support of the maintenance facility supervisor in respect of introducing a memorial. And if you look at pages 13 to 18, Tracy, do you want to take us through this or say add something to this? Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, so you've all had your um, report from Marcus. He just really wanted to know if members are happy with to proceed like that and what your thoughts are on his report. F members, the floor is yours. Do an RTS and we're good to go. Uh, Re Councillor Re Rebecca Clark. Thank you very much, Chairman, um, and thank you very much to Marcus for the report and all of the research that he's done um, in order to move this forward. I didn't know whether it was worth us maybe um, speaking about um, where we've, how we originally arrived at, at, at thoughts about whether we, we should install a memorial. Um, obviously, during the pandemic, difficulty for so many families across the parish has been not being able to be with loved ones made all the more difficult if you have loved ones who are poorly that you cannot visit or you know in tragic scenarios loved ones who are lost and you can't attend funerals etc so the the idea originally um when it was proposed was that there would be an area in hive um a pleasant place to go um to reflect um obviously during the lockdown, um, you know, as long as social distancing um, was in place, um, there would be nothing. It would, it would, it would hopefully be be pleasant to go and have somewhere in Hythe that people could go and spend some time and reflect. Not only just for victims of of the pandemic, but but generally within the parish. So, I see there's a there's a number of suggestions, um, and there are online suggestions. Um, but I think in my mind, um, rather than maybe having a memorial at the hospital which wouldn't necessarily be a place that people would go to walk um, 
if it was maybe a feature within a within a garden space that that people could could visit and spend time in that was attractive that we committed as a council to making quite beautiful like our um, fantastic groundsmen do across the parish it, it would be a place in perpetuity with with a plaque of the covid pandemic that that inspired it that, that people could go to um, you know they could lay you know flowers if they wished um, um, I think it's, it's a place of reflection um, and, and somewhere that you can go if you can't be with the people that you want to console. I mean, I know there's been plenty of families who've known of people in our community who've passed, but have not even been able to comfort those friends, those families because of the lockdown. Um, and, and much as you might go into a church and light a candle or at Christmas, you might place a bow on a memory tree, just having somewhere in, in the parish like that. I mean, in Southampton, they've got a beautiful, um, long wisteria arbor, for example, that you can walk through, you know, something that would be a beautiful feature, a place of reflection and of, you know, remembering, inspired by the pandemic, um, but, but for, for, for all loss within the parish, somewhere beautiful that we can look after as a council. Thank you. Thank you, very well said. And now I'd like to, uh, uh, Councillor Fairhead, please. Alan, you'll go. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I've not seen this report from Marcus. I don't know why I've not seen it. But when we first spoke about this uh, previously, my first thought was it should be in the grounds of the Grove. Um, it, it's not political. It's not at the hospital where people might have been going to to get tested or whatever. It's an area that we control. Um, I just think our groundsmen do a fantastic job and it would just make a nice area within the grounds of the Grove for people to come and see the memorial of it. They can sit and reflect. They've got the water to look at as well if they want to. That's all, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Sandra Delamere, please. Yeah, I think actually Rebecca and Alan have more or less said what I wanted to say. I feel, you know, there's options about... Um, what the National Arboretum and so on. And yeah, I mean, people can do that, but I think somewhere in the parish and somewhere where people can go and reflect. And yeah, I don't think the hospital's um, appropriate in that way. So yeah, Grove Gardens will get my vote. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Anyone else want to, to, to comment on this? Uh, I, I, oh, Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chairman. I, I must admit I have not seen the report from Marcus either, but I would definitely support um, a, a memorial garden at the Grove. Okay. Councillor Thank Rebecca you. Clark, then Sean Cullen. It was just a quick one, just to say, because it will, will um, be for the community, um, maybe we might like to um, see whether local schools or organisations might like to be involved in some way also. You know, it's a way for the community to come together around a focal point um, and they might also have some fantastic ideas and want to make some contributions towards it, maybe, you know, it, it's for the community. Let's help. Let's ensure that the community helps to build it as well. OK, thank you. Councillor Sean, Sean Cullen. Um, yeah, just echo what Rebecca said as well. But um, in Marcus's report, there were a number of options um, maybe what we need to do, as I say, is uh, follow on from Rebecca's and try and get some sort of um, feel the pulse of, of, of the, the parish as to the type of memorial they would like, rather than us, for want of a better word, imposing it upon them, um, you know, let them contribute their ideas. Okay, uh, Councillor Philip Dowd. Um, yes, I think um, it maybe it would be a good idea if we could. Um, hone the, um, the, the number of suggestions down to possibly three options so that it makes it easier to, to make a choice. I think it's absolutely right to the War um, Memorial Hospital, that has a very specific purpose. So I think for, um, for this, we, we would need a, a different venue. But the type, type of memorial and, and what we do there, I think it would be good if we can involve the whole community making a decision there. And give people the option of um, of giving a preference. Uh, Councillor Alex Wade. 
Uh, yes, um, merely just to say that I, I think, um, firstly, I echo the comments that my fellow councillors have made, but I think Councillor Dowd makes a very valid point about streamlining sort of what we're going to present as options. I, for example, have been taking a look and um, based on the idea of having it at the Grove, where it's got one of the most beautiful views in the parish in the area, that to me, a memorial bench, while not original, would be something that would be more meaningful for that area and fitting. Um, it would be nice to hear what... Uh, the wider public and the, the residents of the parish okay i mean the, the original idea when, when we discussed this was to have a place where people could sit reflect and, and there'd be a memorial which would not and, it, and I, I agree with you the grove garden i think is is the best place to have it um but it needs some form of monument uh, but I, I like the idea of in, in engaging with the community what would you like us to do Sort of thing, but but Councillor Dowd's right. We need to minimise the options. Uh, Tracy, uh, just uh, do you know? Do we own all of the Grove Garden down to the water? I don't think we do, do we? I've walked around that area. I'm a little bit familiar with it, but I'll go and have another look. Yeah, what well, well, I seem to remember, Marcus might have said that the bottom part of the Grove Garden we don't own. I could be wrong in this. But um, uh, although we look after it, but You're right, Chairman. Ask him tomorrow. I'm not too sure. Yeah. What yeah. did you say, Alan? Alan? You're right. We don't own it all. We only own the top half of it. The bottom half of it, which we use and maintain, is still owned by the builder who built the houses where our car park is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while, while I'm on, Jim, can I just add? Yeah. Uh, picking up, Alex will know more. If we start building a monument of some sort in the grounds would that have to come through planning i can answer that but alex if you want to uh no it depends how big it is if we were building something like the menning gate yes if we're putting something something of a like we, we have actually i've got a monument in the in the grove gardens already yeah, yeah. a um uh one of those sundial yeah. which was uh, presented by the the American base when it was here. We wouldn't need it for something of, of, of that size, I don't think. But we, but we, I'm sure we can check on that fact. Okay, so we need to we need to make some recommendations, don't we, Tracy? Yes. Okay. So, come on, members. What what do you want to do? We've we've I just cl clarify some of the eyes. You, you, I think the majority of feeling is you'd like it to be in the Grove Garden. You want to engage with the community uh, on what sort of um, monument or, 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 or sort of memorial you would like to see, which I think is a good idea. Um, what, what we've got here, he's put a number, is it put a metal bench, a blue plaque, a stone monument, a wooden bench, a wooden grave bench, uh, and, and some sort of options. Um, we need to give the officers some guidance and a steer, uh, and and we can we can get Helen to to, to scour the community for different opinions. Uh, we can do that. So let's have somebody want to come along with some options, and uh, uh, we vote on it, and then gives guidance to, to the officers to take this for, forward, because it is a really good idea, and you guys came up with it. It was brilliant. Okay, come on, who's going to be who's going to be brave? I've got. Uh, um, hang on. So I've got Tracy, then Mark, then, oh, I've got a load here. I'm sorry, I've got Tracy saying something. Then I've got Rebecca, then Mark, and Tracy again, Simon, and then Alan. So let's go to Tracy first, please. Um, just to give some um, members some help, because I'm on sort of like a, a Facebook class around the country. Um, a lot of them are incorporating a rainbow effect of somewhere. Some have done arches and they've painted it. Some, some have got the slatted benches and they've painted that in a rainbow um, effect. Um, and, you know, you can get um, those benches uh, like you do on V Day. You can get them in, in like a memorial bench or something. So just to give you some ideas if you wanted something static there. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca. 
Thank you, Chairman. Yes, it was similar to Tracy's in that I've seen some, some lovely examples um, done, um, done by children in parishes. For example, there's some inlaid um, painted stones that each of the children have done and then it's been protected under a, under a covering. But, but as regards going out to the community, I mean, one, one suggestion is maybe we could have a, a competition um, in the schools maybe to um, come up with a a design or 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 something or I just think if we in, you know if we uh, the kids have gone through such a enormously difficult time and they're the future of the parish and you know it would be nice to, to include include the youngsters and um, the next generation okay uh, Mark Clark please my just suggestion was some sort of uh, bench that uh, that Tracy actually mentioned about the with incorporates a rainbow with some sort of arbor around it, which uh, which suggests, but also some reference to the NHS. I mean, you know, let's hope it's uh, it goes from strength to strength, but it's it's worth remembering um, who who gave us some protection during this time. Good, uh, Councillor Simon Lodge, please. Um, I was just going to reiterate what Philip said. If we're going to go out to um, the public then we ought to limit limit um, the vast choice that Mark uh, that Marcus has actually given us I do agree the bench and the rainbow especially uh, with the NHS and all the efforts they put in um, should be remembered as well so, somehow yeah good okay Councillor uh, Alan Fairhead uh, thank you, Chair. No, uh, the two councillor clerks and Simon have picked up virtually what I was thinking. So move on. Thank you. Uh, councillor Philip Dowd. Yes, I think um, I'm, I'm certainly in agreement with the bench. Um, we've already talked about planting. So I think it's the how we how we get the community um, engagement bit there. And I think possibly the idea of um, each of the um, schools and community groups um, could um, possibly paint a, um, paint a stone that can go within the memorial garden so that there are contributions from as many um, local, local groups as possible, I think would be very good. Thank you. Okay. Right, Tracy, um, have you got enough from this to, uh, to, to, to give a steer to Marcus? Yes, and then what I'll do, I have actually got some pictures of some benches and things and maybe we can circulate to, that to members and then formulate on that. Um, what what yeah, we want you, to do, you can, you wanna, you, we, sorry, go on. I was going to say, if you want to involve the community, again, you can use your social media and um, just sort of ask for ideas. And Okay, uh, uh, Melody wants to have a quick word. Sorry, and we'll come back to that. Um, Hello, sorry, I beg your pardon, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, you know the Angel of the North? Uh, That's because you have an Angel of the South, only a lot smaller. That would be quite nice as a memorial. We would need planning permission if we wanted to do something like the Angel of the North. Yes. <laughs> okay, S sorry, all right. Um, I've got Philip again now. Can't, um, can't shut me up now. Um, perhaps we could, um, we, we could have um, three benches and they could be voted for, which, which, which bench um, gets, gets the most um, community votes so that we've got engagement in, in the bench because there are a number of options for kinds of bench materials and what, what design. So I think there can be an element of um, community involvement there uh, uh, as well as... Um, so that that could be good. Sean. Um, it, yeah, we would like to get the schools involved. The problem is schools aren't going to be coming back till September. Um, you know, mm. we don't want this thing to drag on. I'm not saying we're going to rush it, but we do need, need to be making progress. So it could well be, as Tracy has suggested, some sort of interaction via social media. Okay. Uh, Tra Tracy, do you think we could get um, Helen to because it, we want it to come from the council to yeah. use her social media outlets yeah. uh, to, to to try and get a feeling from from the community yeah yeah absolutely that's for number one rebecca clark please 
apologies. Um, just to say that um, from my experience as a parent, um, um, the, the, the um, development of online and virtual um, learning, communication, etc., is, is, has developed leaps and bounds. Um, and actually, I know the children aren't all physically in school. Some are, some aren't. But actually, trying to knit them together even you know when they're not there I think you know I, I think just because they're not in their normal school way it would be a shame not to involve the schools because actually the schools have set themselves up to communicate and actually they are putting an emphasis on communicating due to the children's mental health um, virtually so the avenue is there for us to communicate with them um, th through the period of time as well um, you know I, we, again it, it's about sort of trying to to bring the community in but also it might help help the schools also with an, a nice community project that can help them maintain contact with the children in the time that they're not physically with the teachers and their friends okay well we, we could ask helen to contact the schools as well couldn't we tracy yes yes brilliant okay so we're going to do that a number of you have said we should reduce the options that we are going to. So, can I have some feedback? I, 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 can, can I make one, one, one point for me? I, I'd like, to, if we're going to have a benches involved, I'd like more than one bench because, you know, this is quite a big thing affected a lot of people. We want to have an area with something and a few benches for people to go and reflect. I, I, that's a personal view. Uh, Councillor Clark wants to say something. Mark Clark? Can you turn your volume up, Mark? I can't hear you. You're muted. Ah, there we are. Right. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Just to ask uh, whether we could um, just have something on the comms panel, really, just so that we make sure that we use every avenue to get as many people as possible. Good That's idea. Good. We can do that, Tracy, can't we? Yeah. OK, we, we need to give um, the officers a steer of out of these selection of um, options. Can somebody come up with three that we go for? Freeze a round number and it freeze a magic number. <laughs> Who wants to come up with three options that we can say this is what we ought to look to give to the public to have a look at and for us to, to go with? Okay, I would like to propose that we present the free bench options to the community. Yep. Okay. Um, Right, we've got Alex has said free, free benches. Philip, um, I I also think the bench option is very good, but I would I would like um, an ongoing project for each of the community groups, including schools, to be involved with. The bench one is something we can do relatively quickly. That the other one could be done over time and added as as the garden takes shape. So if we've got, for example, painted stones. Um, submitted by each uh, of the community groups and schools, they could be added over time. And then we've also got the planting. Okay, uh, Simon Lodge, next. Simon? Um, I, I agree with Phil. I think we, I think the bench one is the, probably the easiest one and the quickest one that we can do, but we can involve the community in its design, um, which is what Tracy was saying. So when we see some of those other examples from Tracy, then maybe we could use some of that, but we can also get the schools involved with some of the designs as well. Yeah. Okay, good. Alan, you're next. Chairman, uh, yeah, I go with the idea of three benches, uh, a horseshoe of flower bed going from one to three, and in the middle of it, the stones that the children from the schools do. Or, or something else that they come up oh, with. Yeah, something in that nature. Okay, are we all agreed with that? Hands up, right? Yeah, we're all there. With that. Uh, Tracy, is that enough for, 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 to go forward with? Yes, I think so. Yes. Brilliant. Well, that's very good, members. That was a good bit of work. That was. Okay, uh, we now have finance 2020 to 2021. Tracy, do you want to say anything on this? Um, no, it's just Beverly's produced it and it's um, the schedule of payments and direct debits to date. 
Um, just to remind members that um, at the next meeting we need to bring through the internal audit. So um, there'll be it'll be quite a, a financial meeting next month. And, and I have to sign it after that meeting, don't I? Yes. Uh, actually, all right, okay, good. Because I know they need to sign minutes as much as do all at the same time. No. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that's great. Any members, you want any comments about the finance? We um. I'm going to have to ask you to have a proper vote on this. To receive the Bank Reconciliation Report for 2020, to receive accounts payment for May 2020. Uh, I'm going to ask everybody to be happy with this. I'm going to call out your names when I find the bit of paper, which I've got the names on, in order, just to make sure that we have, uh, everybody's happy with the finances. Uh, I'm going to start with Councillor... Uh, uh, is that Clark? Mark. Mark Clark. Okay. Agreed, to... Mr. Chairman. Councillor Rebecca Clark. Um, agreed. Councillor Sean Cullen. Agreed. Um, Councillor Alan Fairhead. Agreed. Uh, Councillor Melody Roberts. Agreed. Councillor Simon Lodge. Agreed. Councillor Philip Dowd. Uh, thanks to Beverly and agreed. Councillor Alex Wade. Agreed, and thanks to the finance officer. And I have, I have asked everybody but me, and I agree as well, so it's unanimous. No, you haven't Ta asked me. Oh, Sandra, <laughs> sorry, Sandra, sorry. The reason I is... Agree. Right, you, I apologise. You got out of alphabetical order, I know. No, what happened ready? was I lost a bit of paper, and I was going through the screen. <laughs> I apologise for that. Sorry. Anyway, I agree. Right, so that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Well, members, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for any members of the public that watched it. Um, uh, we were probably one of the first councils in the New Forest, possibly in Hampshire, to have a presentation. And I think that did very well. Thank you all. Have a thank good day. You.